do we actually teach the uh, the younger generation the right things or not right uh, so if you're looking for entrepreneurship or if you're looking for uh, ways in which you can you know uh, create real world projects designing systems is much more important uh, in my opinion than than data structures and algorithms data structures and algorithms will help you understand that hey if there's an index on the id then how is that index working it's a bt yes okay uh, if you have get teams then how am i going to route this request you know in a load balanced way all those things are awesome yes but the fact is we are engineers so we are half mechanics half researchers not yes just researchers Hello everyone. I hope all of you are doing really, really good. So those of you who do not know me, my name is Muskan Agarwal. And in this video, तुम लोगों ने देख लिया होगा thumbnail से that we have done something with system design. And this video was totally out of my league. I never thought I will do something like this. But okay, this happened. So to be very honest, before uh, recording this video, I was quite nervous and uh, like I did not know whether I will be able to pull it off or not. But I am glad that I did it. So yeah, please enjoy the video and let me know in the comment section below if I did a good job or a bad job, or just let me know what you think about this video. Yes. So hello everyone. Today we have Gaurav with us. I don't think he needs any introduction, but still, can you give my audience a brief introduction about yourself? Sure. Thanks, Muskan. Thanks for inviting me. I'm Gaurav Sen. I am a YouTuber. I'm also a software engineer. Uh, my youtube channel has mainly content on system design uh, and uh, hopefully we'll be talking about what system design is soon hmm. but uh, yeah otherwise apart from that there is some content on artificial intelligence uh, and on computer programming also yes so in today's video gaurav is going to teach me system design and Honestly, I don't know anything about system design. I just I have just seen one to two videos of his only about system design. So and then in the second half, we will be solving a beginner level question together. Okay. Awesome. So yes, girl, you can start now. I think this is going to talk more about my teaching skills than anything else. So if if you if things go bad, then it's on me. But okay. I'm really uh, excited and nervous for this like for the same okay. thing. Okay. So. Um, Right, Muskan. So, firstly, if I have to talk about what system design is, uh, hmm. it is taking a complex, or, or rather, I shouldn't use the word complex. If you have a system uh, or uh, a piece of code, you need to run it. So, on yes. your computer, when you hit, uh, you know, when you run the main function, what you are doing hmm. is you are running the program on your computer. Um, yes. There's one major issue here. In the real world, you don't know when you need to run this program. For example, hmm. uh, and you also need to run it back in history. For example, um, I am watching a TV show, uh, and uh, I press a like. So okay. that like button can come any time. It's not like yes. I run the main function and then the like button has to run. It can run at any given point in time. So we need hmm. something which is continuously running. That is a server. Okay. okay. So uh, that that thing is an infinite process. You can imagine it hmm. to be that. Thing. Like Facebook it runs forever. Uh, now you can run this in your home or you can run it in a place which is safe where there's a security guard where there are uh, people who are making sure that you know there is physical security uh, assigned mm -hmm. over there the other thing is there might be too much heat in your house there might be yes. uh, you know you can put that bigger computer uh, it's cheaper to take 10 computers in a place which is cheap let's say you go to a village you'll get land cheap while in your house of course it's very expensive so taking all this into consideration what you do is you actually go to a physical location and call it cloud because okay. technically what's happening is when i'm running a program it doesn't matter whether it's running on my computer or some other computer in some other ip hmm. address so yes. uh, from here we have the starting of a of a cloud service okay, um, okay. Uh, just to uh, give you more context amazon has a lot of computers Hmm. They can run their programs without any problem. They have so many computers that they can rent out computers. So people like me, uh, I own this company, Interview Ready. We go to Amazon and we tell them, Ki, thoda give us the computer for rent. Uh, you know, if you can give it for cheap, it will be nice. Uh, and hmm. you have such a big uh, hardware data center. Why don't you handle, uh, you know, turning off power supply, generators, all of those things. I don't want to handle it. And I'll give you rent money. Okay. Okay. So this is... Uh, this is called cloud computing, let's say. This is the very basics of what cloud computing will be. System design 
talks about how is a system which is hosted on the cloud uh, mm -hmm. going to interact with each other so okay. yeah for for example if you have a shop which is a pizza shop dominos mm -hmm. so they go to amazon they say that all our software will run on your computers we we'll pay you mm -hmm. rent um, we will write the code because you don't know what we need plus we want to have full control over the code yes we will deploy this code on cloud servers uh, and uh, you know if a person says please go to dominos.com hmm. send it to this code which is running over here okay so, for example when you type facebook.com or uh, dominos.com what happens is your browser says i don't know what dominos.com is hmm. it uh, it goes to your isp the people you pay for internet goes to yes. the internet service provider those guys say ha you paid me i will give you two things one is internet connection uh, and uh, the other thing is i will actually find out where things exist so mm -hmm. dominos.com yeah i know the ip address for dominos.com is 1.2.3.4 okay so okay. it will route that request over there uh, i wish i could draw <laughs> i think I, i'm not sure if everything is uh, you know i think i'm giving too much information is is this part making sense this point no it is actually making sense because you are relating it to real life examples so i'm able to relate more than thing okay okay so if you are like for example people are watching this on youtube you know youtube.com doesn't make any sense if tomorrow um, everyone says youtube.com is a is a, a gaming site it will become a gaming site it won't be a video hosting yeah. site so yeah. the the only thing is uh, and if you say for example the country india is now going to be called bharat that's hmm. it everything changes it's not like india is a real place it's more of yes. a more of a ip address you can think so just like that facebook.com uh, dominos.com is an ip address the request flows uh, from first it goes to a uh, person who knows these ip addresses it's called domain name server uh, hmm. they get this uh, request and they go and give it to the ip address which needs this which is dominos ka server deployed on amazon okay, okay. now inside whatever happens the database uh, the any kind of storage of information communication of information uh, any kind of complex operation and the interactions that is called system design system design okay yeah so uh, if i ask you design dominos for example then mm -hmm. what you'll be thinking of is okay people are sending me requests from outside in the world they are sending requests through http or something i don't care i get a request inside what do i do where do i store this data oh i need a database okay they also need some sort of files they need to see that pizza image so i need mm -hmm. to store it some place i can store it in a database but it's not maybe ideal so i'll store it in a file system uh, cheap also you know so yeah. uh, then then you go like okay fine but what if a lot of people request uh, what if alia bhats ad goes for dominos mm -hmm. everyone is buying dominos so i need to probably limit the number of requests i can take i can say okay yes. first ten requests then i have to say sorry or uh, now if a person buys a pizza uh, they have made a payment they want a notification also email notification telling them thank you this is the invoice pdf generation mm -hmm. so these are all the things that you need to do uh, this is system design that's it okay one so question one, yeah sure like i have heard that there are there is low level system design and high level system design so that is like how complicated we want our system to be like is, is that yeah. what it means roughly yes high level system design is when you take the requirements uh, and you just draw you draw them you make the components and you say this is how they'll be talking to each other low level is when you actually code it a part okay. of it uh, for example uh, the you know what if alia bhat sends to me requests somebody has to actually code that that if more than yes. 10 requests came in last second please drop all requests so that code is much harder to type than to say so in high level you are able to touch a lot of parts uh, in low level you are able to grab one part and actually focus on that and make sure you can code it out okay makes sense right uh, so okay i think let's go for high level uh, yes you can decide that okay cool cool uh, let's let's try uh, a little bit of high level design now. this is by the way a very brave of you muskan i in your place would not have <laughs> I was, I After sending silent. you the message, I was so scared that maybe it will be bad for me. No, no, not at so all. Uh, it's it's actually really interesting to see how you will be reacting in this situation, and I think it's totally on me and on 
on uh, the faculty which has taught you computer science now to mm -hmm. see how you react do we yes do we actually teach the uh, the younger generation the right things or not right uh, so uh, now uh, let me just give you the question the question is you have okay let's go with the pizza example uh, let's say you have a i've seen that video of yours by the way <laughs> okay then then let me give you another example uh, let's say that you have to um it's a google calendar sort of thing yes. you have to design google calendar uh, it's a high level design you know many people are coming like people like me from country uh, india so we have ist we have us yes. people with their own time zones five time zones uh, we need to be able to match and invite different guests you have a description mm -hmm. you have those kind of things reminders notifications I i'm just yes. giving you the rough idea obviously you don't need to go through all of this but in general if someone comes to you and says please design google calendar for us we are a new company startup can you help us think and design what will you do as an engineer so basically first of all i'll think of uh, like what the user will want so as you mentioned that uh, the user might want the like there might be different time zones so basically i have to like uh, give separate things for different different time zones and then uh, like um, No, you can take your time. Obviously, this is not a this is not an engineering question. Also, it's like like a product yeah. question, right? Initially, obviously, you can take your time. Yeah. So maybe like uh, I have to design the interface also, like how I want my interface to be. So maybe I'll like decide rows and columns, and then as I see on Google Calendar, there are different different colors for different different thing, and then I can put up reminders. as you mentioned like there there's an option for a reminder and then i can restrict to the number of reminders that uh, like a google calendar like should give me and maybe uh, i can also add that feature like how many days or hours before i want a reminder because someone might need a reminder one hour before someone might need a reminder five hours before yeah so that's a good idea can add that feature okay uh, anything else that you can see any anything else that you want to pick on hmm. reminders can be there then uh, maybe i can just put cards on like uh, if i have to schedule my day suppose i have to schedule tomorrow's day so i can put uh, like i can uh, put an option for schedule a day and then i can just uh, like schedule my entire day according to the time like 4 to 5 i'm doing this then this this time i'm having a break we have this thing on google calendar as well like we can schedule our entire day so yeah that can be an option i think i think that's good uh, also can you think in terms of collaborating like for example i uh, i'm working in a team so yes i might be able to share my calendar with somebody else yes, yes. so they can they can see my calendar invites yes that is a very good uh, thing that yes maybe like i can decide whom i have to share like i have seen notion and various other things wherein you know i can just input the email id of the person i want to share my calendar with and then maybe i can uh, share my calendar suppose i am maybe participating in a hackathon and i want to share that at what time i am doing what uh, with my other teammates so maybe that can be helpful yeah i think that's awesome i think that's a lot of uh... I hope uh, I'm making yeah. sense. Of course, uh, of course. So, uh, okay. So, uh, talking about the high-level design, how would you, how would you try to break this down? Uh, there's two ways. Mm -hmm. One is, you think about the user. The user makes a request to calendar, uh, and yes. then you know it goes inside, and then goes gets stored in the database, and then they get a response. Or you can think in terms of database. What is the data I need to store, and then you think about the the processing part which is the servers and then mm -hmm. you think about the users so that is the the inverted approach both are useful okay. but which one do you prefer yes so like you mentioned that i need to have a database so i think in database i need to have some general information about the user and uh, yeah i don't think we need anything else apart from the general information like the email id and the general details that we take while signing in uh You're telling me that you don't need to store the net worth. Net. Net worth. Net worth, as in. So, uh, how much money do they have? No, no. 
like for calendar why do we need the net worth i think i was okay, no, i think i was joking uh, so <laughs> yeah uh, uh, so okay yeah like you said the profile information can be very rudimentary uh, mm -hmm. maybe profile picture and then if they are maybe having a team so we can like we can have a separate thing for that maybe we can like take the name of the team and uh, like all the other details if okay. they are open for the team option okay uh, would you like to draw the diagram or now so it will it will be even more clear then yeah i can draw but i don't exactly have an idea how does it work so okay I, i'll give you a little bit of a, a hint so for example hmm. if there is a okay it depends on which side you are going uh, would you like to go database first or would you like to go request first user side yeah we can go for user uh, user side request first user side okay so yeah. assume you have a mobile connected to your server uh, hmm. in your server what function do you need to call to satisfy this request so uh, the first request is, is uh, for example uh, create profile that's a function mm -hmm. uh, yes. in that you will pass a argument uh, or, or a parameter will be there which is profile, profile so this yes. profile will then need to be stored in a database Hmm. Yeah, and next time when they come and they say that uh, create calendar event, that might be another function. So in that you say, whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait. Do you have a profile? Let me check that with the database. Yes, you have a authenticated profile. Your password matches the one I have stored in the database. Hmm. Well done. Okay, now I will go ahead and create a calendar event. Okay. So that is that, these are firstly you can think about the functions which you are going to be exposing uh, to the public. Hmm. Certain functions you may not want to expose to the public, uh, but uh, mm -hmm. ignore that. Uh, what are the functions that you want to expose to users? Yeah, so I can relate to what I, what like happens to me when I generally log into a website. So it asks me whether I already have an account or not. So if a user has an account, then it will log in and then it will uh, show me all the details that I've already stored. Suppose I've planned an event or I've set reminders and everything, it will show me. And if I'm all not an existing user, it will ask me for a sign in option and I have to uh, put all the details and everything. And first of all, I'll become a user and then I'll start using the service. Uh, right. Yeah. And after I am into the like, uh, actual actual system then what I, the, uh, what will be visible to me is that uh, all the reminders schedules and then all my teams that are there or whatever i have done like whatever we discussed before what all features we have so yeah that will be visible to me okay here's uh, that's a that's a very good idea here's the interesting thing uh, google calendar you go to the server and you say create a profile it creates a profile yeah. for you now you say, give me the, uh, give me all my events for this day. Yeah. Okay. Uh, or for this week. So that is open on your screen. Now, mm -hmm. when you press the right button, you go to the next week. So mm -hmm. Google calendar, is it going to authenticate you again? Is it going to say, is this really Muskan? Uh, and then allow you to get the events or is it going to just allow you to take the, I mean, show you all the calendar events. If I'm already logged in, then I don't think uh, uh, authentication is required again. If I'm already logged in, but okay. it will uh, require authentication. Okay. If you don't require authentication, uh, exactly what is happening when you're pressing the right click? I mean that right arrow button okay. on calendar. Uh, what exactly is happening? You're you're asking the server for some data for that next week. Yes. Uh, how are you asking that uh, information? Are you not going to be sending authentication information? In which case I can also come and I can send that exact same request and get your details, right? Okay. No, what I've thought is like we uh, log in on Instagram or any other app. So that way I'm thinking like, first of all, I need yeah. to log in and okay, then, in. yeah, then I will have uh, my details like whatever i'll click only then after logging in i will have no absolutely of course you're right after you have logged in you don't need to ask multiple times that please this is the same person like i i don't need to ask multiple times please uh, i'm gaurav but how does the server know about this how does the server know that this is gaurav once i have logged in uh, this mm -hmm. 
So the interesting thing is, if you think about what is a server storing, if, if it has functions, if it just has a function uh, of uh, get calendar items, what is being passed in that function? So I'll, I'll actually draw on the screen. I think uh, that will that might help. No, be more clear. Yeah. yeah okay. So uh, imagine this to be the server, and you have a get calendar events. Here. Okay. So what are the uh, things that you'll be passing here? So you have a list of uh, events. Events, say, uh, calendar events that you want to send back to the user if they make a function call. But uh, what what parameters will be passing here? One of them is user ID, maybe. Hmm. Okay. Uh, and then what else? You'll also be saying uh, the time range. Yeah. So start date and uh, End, ending date. Okay. So this is this looks good. Uh, hmm. Now let's say there are two users, okay? Okay, I, I was scared that. Uh, okay, so this is Gaurav, uh, and then there is another mobile client, or rather, this name I, I don't like, so I'll just call it John. I mean, I love my name, but not not for this. You can put GKCS. Okay. Yeah, GKC is also a good name. But both yeah. John and Jane are connected to this. Okay, um, and let's remove user ID, right? Because what happened is uh, initially John was logged in, uh, and then they were able to see their calendar events. They then okay. said, oh, give me the next week's calendar events, which means that this get calendar events function is called with start date and end date. Yes. Okay. Uh, but Jane, she can also do the same thing. She can send the same request for get calendar events, start date and end date. Uh, and what's going to happen here? Is she going to get John's events? Yeah. So maybe we can put authentication as you mentioned. Right. We can put authentication. We can put a user ID also. But if we don't yeah. authenticate, then Jane will get uh, John's events if she passes exactly. the correct user ID. Hmm, correct. So if, if you so at every uh, function call you are going to be uh, authenticating. Hmm. Okay, okay, that's interesting. So do you think that's a bit expensive? Uh, because over here you are going to be, yeah, how are you going to be authenticating by the way through password, right? Depending upon the number of users, actually, like if we have less number of users, I think it we can work. But if you have a large number of users then it will be a bit of a problem. Yeah, yeah. So that brings us to a, uh, the first important assumption of system design. We assume that <laughs> the system needs to scale a lot. That's okay. uh, the reason we do that is because, you know, uh, yeah, m most of the companies are looking to scale. Uh, if the number of users is small, then then the company has failed, right? So, yeah. so what, uh, what they want is like, uh, you have a lot of users who are using Google Calendar. Uh, <laughs> And you want to now authenticate. So that is, you know, solved one problem, which is security. Mm -hmm. How do you solve the problem of efficiency where every time John asks for uh, anything, they have to pass that username and password to authenticate. Mm -hmm. Yes. So how do you solve this? Um, an authentication, we can use a normal thing. Like every time I'm logging in, they like whatever email ID I'm registered with, there will be an OTP sent to my email ID maybe. And uh, Okay, every time? Won't that be a bad user experience? Won't that be inefficient? Yeah, maybe I can choose for a password option, but I've seen on many websites because people forget their password. So there's an option to send an OTP so that I can immediately log in. Okay, no, uh, you logged in. So John okay. logged in, uh, mm -hmm. and they saw their calendar events. When they clicked on, yeah, yeah. But uh, I am pressing the right button, and every time if I go on network, mm -hmm. uh, if I say inspect, and I go on network, uh, and I press the left button, then you saw that there is uh, some information, some request which is being fired. But now, yeah. in this request, I don't want to be sending my. Uh, Username and password every time, mm -hmm. uh, because that is 
not what I want to do. I, I want to authenticate faster, basically. So okay, basically, uh, we need to think that how should I authenticate the user? Yeah. So how will you authenticate in general? If you say username password, uh, mm -hmm. and you then call this function. So I don't know if I am uh, making much sense, but I'll try. Uh, this is one function. This is there's another function that I want to show. This get no create user. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that is uh, my ID, my password, okay, and this returns this returns a boolean true or false. Uh, and here I want to store this in a database. So what's happening when John comes and says that I want to create a user ID, John, uh, with password X, Y, Z, what are you going to do with this information? Uh, I'm just going to take this information and check whether the password for the corresponding user ID is correct or not. And if the password is correct, then I'll just log in to the, or like I'll show the details of that particular user, like whatever the user is requesting, if the user is requesting the schedule or the reminder or anything. So, yeah. Okay. okay. So you have a login also, uh, mm -hmm. thing, which is allow yes or no. Uh, and in that you check in the database, whether the username and password is matching. Match. Yeah. Okay. Now get calendar events. You need to do the same thing, right? Every time. Mm -hmm. Then what is the point of logging in, right? Uh, yeah. So that was what I was telling in the like telling initially that after we log in, we should not uh, require uh, all these okay. things. Like, That's absolutely that. correct. You're right. Uh, so, mm -hmm. what do you want to do? You want to send instead of the password. What would you like to keep in the database? Like. Uh, while uh, I have to cre get the events. So while getting the events, I can put just the start date and the end date and like it can show me and how can someone else log in? Because I'm thinking like I'll enter the user ID and the password only when it is correct, then only I will log in. So, okay. Okay. No, uh, I opened. So for, for example, these requests, right? This one, mm -hmm. it happens over a network HTTP uh, or yeah. different protocol, but for example, John has is making this call. Jane can use the same IP address. She's using the same IP address when she's doing it. So she uses that and says, uh, get calendar events. That's an HTTP call. User ID, she got John's user ID, not his password, mm -hmm. public user ID. Uh, start date and end date, and then she gets his details. So she's basically uh, hacked the system a bit. She's getting detail, personal details of other people. Yeah, so maybe I think that, that OTP. Hmm. That I think for now, uh, this, this level of security is good. We can start with password. Because oh, the question I'm asking is very specific that, hey, why, why, why don't we, why don't we have <laughs> something other than password here? I'm very fast. Yeah. But uh, moving, uh, moving from this, what else would you like to have in this system? Like what all features I'd like to have? Or uh, what kind of functions for those features? Yeah, what all functions? So as I as we decided for the team thing, so maybe I can have one feature in which it it will show all my teams. Maybe I want to make five teams, so we can create a function get teams. So it will show me all my teams, and when I click on that particular team, it will show me all the details about that particular team and uh, what all people are there in that team. Okay, so you have something like get teams, uh, and yes. you also have something like get team details. Yes, after okay. we go to get teams, then it will show me all the teams, and from there we can have that details button. That's that's a good idea. So you're going to click on something, and it's going to show you get team details. So get teams, yeah. what are you going to pass here, as a uh, as parameters? Uh, get teams, we can like. Like we can have a simple button maybe like as soon as I click on get teams, it will show me all the teams that I've created. And uh, yes, in that's correct. Uh, now uh, think in terms of the uh, backend, the server, it has no idea what you've clicked. You know, you might be clicking something, you might be on uh, 
you're right button click might happen sometimes the page itself has to load all your teams and show you uh, on the teams mm -hmm. page so the the server doesn't know where this request is coming from that is uh, the first concern so in this function what is the information that you need to give for the server to find the teams relevant to you okay so maybe we can like enter the like maybe if i want that i have a friend xyz and i need to see all the teams with that particular friend so i can okay. just input the name of the friend and it will show me all the teams that has like in which xyz is added okay and what about you yeah i am added in all teams i was okay so who are the two users mm -hmm. okay uh, to to simplify firstly you need to say who you are so you have to pass your user id yes okay so now the server knows okay this person wants to get the teams mm -hmm. uh, and then so now this is going to return you what this get teams function all the li the list of all the teams that i have created okay that's awesome so you have a list of teams who's been created by the creator user id yeah okay uh, and uh, your friend so you have a friend who also has a user id yes so now okay so now the server knows that these two people need to be common hmm. uh, in this list of teams and then it goes to the database uh, and it searches for those teams mm -hmm. okay okay so uh, what's this going to be is it going to be a sql query or something else uh this can be an sql query because like i have studied in dbms like how to extract uh, like from like if a table is given we can find out how like uh, like we need to find all the rows in which two people are common so maybe we can use yeah that, that sounds that that's sensible yes absolutely mm -hmm. okay okay and what about the next method which is uh, get team details get team details so uh, like uh, we'll get all the teams with the two friends in common and then it will show me the list of all the teams in which we are there not the details just the name of the teams in which we are there okay uh, yeah and uh, how are you going to what parameters will you pass there uh so after like after i have put in the get team so it will show me like i don't think we need to pass any parameters like i have put my user id and that person's user id and then it will automatically show me all, the list of all the teams oh, and okay. then, yeah yeah that makes sense yeah so you basically get the list of teams here itself you in get <laughs> team details you just expand that and you just show the information that you already have yes okay yes. okay so we don't need this as an api actually then we can just skip it yeah okay okay um which is which is again good okay i think we are what what else do you want to do uh in terms of a calendar uh, you want to have a booking also i think yes and reminders also we can put okay so bookings and reminders hmm. so you want to create calendar events also right yes okay so let's try to do that we have create calendar event uh, what would you like to pass here as the parameters calendar events as in it will show me the list of all the events uh, in that particular date so that is in the get calendar events when you're creating you are basically saying something like this that uh, hey create this event okay so like we are creating this particular event like with this particular function yes yes okay so because this really it doesn't know what to do you mm -hmm. have to tell it very specifically that create this calendar event with this user id yes uh, and these are the parameters then the server the reason why people do this is because if a server crashes right if this if this server becomes dead mm -hmm. then you can easily spin up a new server it is live nice. so that's one of the benefits you can just replace it but if you have some data in the server uh, then it becomes a problem because once this crashes 
that data is lost. lost. So instead, you always store this uh, data in the database, which mm. is safe, and the server can easily be replaced. So it's called stateless. There is no state in it. Yeah. Server crash, no issues. Naya mm. server laga. Uh, database crash is uh, still a problem, but huh, there are some ways to mitigate that. We have a distributed database. Okay. But uh, getting back to create calendar event, what would you like to pass here? So event, I might need to add my multiple friends. So I can maybe have an option to add the user ID with which I would like to share the events. For example, like I'm considering uh, Google calendars only, like it has an option to add friends. So I can create that. Then I can put a time, like uh, when I'd like to, when I'd want the event to start and when I'd want the event to end, the start time and the end time we can, I can add. And okay. then I can also add the date so that like I can also link it to the reminder thing, like whatever date I'm adding here, it will like automatically remind me on that particular day that okay, you have this event, like one hour from now you have this particular event. Okay. Uh, but I'm just concerned, why do you uh, want a, why do you want a date when you have start time? We can start time contain the date plus time or okay. do you want them separate? Yeah, we can do that actually, like date and time, we can put it together only. And, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. and we can add Absolutely. friends, like whomsoever we need to create the meeting with. Yes. So uh, a list of user IDs, uh, friends, maybe. Yeah. Friends is a list of user IDs uh, and you say start time, end time. Uh, you say your user ID. Uh, <laughs> anything else that you want to pass here? Anything else? Uh, Reminder section, maybe we can put an option. Do we need to get reminded for this particular thing or oh, not? That's, and, that's a good idea. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I think. Cheating a little bit here. Uh, when we go to create a calendar, yeah, we might have a location description and all this. But all this is like, there's a lot of details. So instead of doing that, we can call it uh, event meta metadata, maybe. Okay. The data means uh, information related to some data. So the calendar right here. Okay. So this is nice. What would you like to return to the user if the calendar is successfully created? So event. we can just show a pop-up message that your event is successfully created or something. And if any detail is missing, maybe that is mandatory. So we can show a pop-up message for that also that this detail is missing. You should just put it. Uh, this okay. field, yeah. So you would like to send a status or a response saying that uh, yes. successful creation or failed because um, you know you already have ten events at that time. You can't book yes. eleven months, something like that. Okay, mm -hmm. that sounds good. So some sort of a response. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I think this is uh, you are able to now create events, get the calendar mm -hmm. events. You are able to set teams, get teams, uh, log in. Yeah, I, I think, uh, is there anything we are missing? I, I think we have most of the things noted down. If you go to a real calendar, this is what we do, right? Just, just block dates, we invite people. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. you also need to send email uh, reminders. So how will you do that? Oh, yeah, reminder, yeah. So in reminder section, first of all, like if a person is like taking on that reminder tick box there, an automatic reminder would be created. But there can be events like we are not creating that event on our calendar, but we need a reminder for that. So maybe we can put a separate button for a reminder and we can add all the, for example, the name of the event we can put. And then we can set a time when we need to remind it. And we can put like that also, like one hour, two hour, three hour, like how much time before we need a reminder. So, okay, that's a really interesting thing. So um, yeah. I'm, what I'm doing is all of these functions, right? These are on the server. Mm -hmm. So you're clearly able to see on the UI how they look, which is really useful because it's how the yeah. product is designed. Uh, hmm. But on the server also, uh, there is a lot of detachment from with the UI because UI changes often. Uh, there is also times when some other company or some other party wants to call your function directly on the server. They don't hmm. want to go through the UI. 
because they find that slow or uh, you know they want to automate that process so you're right in the reminder there needs to be a button uh, the button needs to have certain things like uh, number of reminders yeah uh, you also added another thing which is like know, how the, many hours before we need uh, a reminder okay reminder times okay, i just call it uh, Okay, so and this can be a list. Uh, you have a list of notification time. Uh, call it list of time, which is notify at these times. Okay. Yeah. Anything else that you want to pass? You want to probably pass the user ID also. User ID, yeah. Number of reminders, yeah. And should we restrict the number of reminders? For example, like uh, we can set only ten reminders or fifteen, but or no, not really sure. Uh, yeah, that that makes sense. You can store that information in the server though. So every time you get a reminder request, you can tell me, oh, they are talking about five hundred reminders, but we can send only ten. Ten. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, and maybe if two particular reminders are clashing, we can send a pop-up message that there's already an event at that particular time, so we cannot okay. create. So again, on the server, you'll be sending back a response saying that this is a illegal request for reminders. Okay. Yes. Uh, so this is a set reminder. Okay. Uh, there is another uh, thing here, which is missing in this function. If Borov is setting up, uh, you know, reminders for a particular calendar event, they send their user ID. Mm -hmm. What else do they need to send? How does the server identify which event do I need to, or which calendar event I need to send this for? Uh, but it is not necessary that we need to have an event calendar event for the reminder. Like, what are you going to remind them of? Like anything, maybe I have like I have a class at this particular at six o'clock, so I can just put a reminder. Like there's a class at six o'clock, and it just reminds me. But I've not put like uh, like in that event, I've not created. That's oh, just okay. a normal reminder. Okay, okay, that's interesting. Okay, that is interesting. So basically, something like uh, uh, you know, go for a walk or drink water. Yeah. Uh, these are not calendar events, but you want to set reminders. Okay, that's yeah, interesting. Yeah. interesting. I'm wondering though that if you have a calendar invite, uh, you do have reminders based on that also. So how are you going to capture that, the relevant information here in this reminder? Do you, do you want to? Your your uh, I think that's a really good idea that you don't want to tie out tie up reminders with calendar events. Sometimes you yeah, just yeah. want to say. But if you have a calendar event for which you have a reminder, how are you going to take that information? You have taken care of flexibility, which is excellent. Uh, mm -hmm. But how do you incorporate this uh, feature of calendar reminder? So like, uh, as we discussed while we were creating the event, we can set that whether I want to set a reminder for that or not. So if I am like uh, taking on that checkbox, then uh -huh. that details will be stored in this reminder section. Okay, uh, that's great. So you're saying this is an optional uh, thing, hmm. but optional uh, event ID you're going to sign. So if event ID yeah. is not, then you're going to have a. Okay, okay, I think this is pretty good. Uh, I think we have reminders, we have people who we can share our calendars with. So those are teams. Uh, okay, so you're going to share the entire calendar with these, these teams, I guess. Yeah. And you can create login, get calendar events, create a uh, calendar event and you're basically, you're good. You can delete calendar events also similarly. I, I won't get into that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think I'm an excellent teacher then. Uh, yes. <laughs> There's one final thing. You're going to be storing all this stuff in a database. Uh, are you, have you done ER diagrams in college? Yes. I okay. So, uh, basic question, just to clarify, like even in a real interview, they don't ask you to do all ER diagrams. They'll just ask you one. 
So how is the calendar uh, thing going to look in the database? Are you going to store all calendar invites uh, events in a table? And then what is the data schema of that table? Uh, maybe like I can, like if you're talking in terms of ER diagrams, so what I'm thinking is like I can take user ID and start time, end time, all as attributes. And okay. then uh, uh, maybe I can do something with that. Yeah, okay. Uh, just go, uh, sure. So you have user ID. Okay. Yeah. This is uh, this is what bar care or something. Okay, fine. Okay. Yeah. Next. Oh yeah, and you are saying that everything over here, start time, end time, uh, everything here is going to be stored in this database. Yeah, start time, end time, and the list of users maybe that also we need to store in the database. Uh, so all the users make sorry friends. Okay. Okay. So you are going to store all these parameters. Yeah. Uh, yes, I I really like this question because it's a trick question. So. Uh, apart from all these parameters, is there something that the database needs to specifically store? Yeah. User Basically, when, uh, there is a successful thing, right? This response, mm. if it is successful, the user or the UI gets something called an ID. Yes. Which this calendar in event actually has an ID. So for every calendar event, if you can identify it just using mm. the number one, two, three, then the database knows where to look for. Okay, so we need to have a calendar ID basically. Yeah, perfect. So you have a calendar ID. Now, you know, if the user says get event, you can get the event details for that ID. Okay. But, yeah. Okay, okay awesome. Uh, and one final thing, which is, I think if you do your, have, have you worked on a project uh, yet? Yeah, like I'm into web development, so those projects. Yeah. Okay, okay. So there might be something in a database that you uh, usually store apart from the details in the request. So the ID is one thing that pretty much the database comes up with or the server generates mm -hmm. and sends back and stores in the database uh, you know, asynchronously. But the other thing that is uh, useful is timestamp. So, timestamps, yes. Yeah. So you can tell that between this time to this time, how many of them were created. That's mm. useful for debugging and useful for sometimes also sorting the calendar invites. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but uh, also, I think you got the gist of the whole thing because mm. basically the database is a dumb thing. You took data mm. over here, the parameters here, and you dumped it here. Mm. Uh, the reason being that the database should not have too much logic in it. It shouldn't use its brain too much. If you want to do processing, you do it here. If you want to store data, you do it here. If you want to show stuff, you do it here on the on the app or on the browser. Okay, uh, I think uh, I've spoken a lot. What do you think? Yeah, I actually understood it. Like okay. this is actually so much interesting. <laughs> I'll stop DSA okay. now. Okay, really? Uh, I, I thought I thought yeah. I made a mess. I thought I am talking too much. Uh, in fact. No, no. Is this is this really making sense uh, genuinely? Because yeah, genuinely, I understood it. Like whatever is there on your screen right now, I actually understood it. Cool, cool. So in general, if you are into software engineering, this is the kind of thing that you'll be dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, okay. uh, it's much closer than algorithms or data structures are to software engineering. Uh, yeah. Because those kind of things, those problems come rarely. Uh, as compared to these kind of problems, and you can yeah. see that, right? That you need to store a calendar invite. It's not, it's not a rocket science, yeah. but it's also the real world. So it makes a difference. Uh, if you create a hospital system and you save thousands of hours for the doctors and the nurses, hmm. or, or if you create a, I, I had this friend of mine. She used to work in. Uh, she used to work in this pacemaker thing. There was a, mm. uh, yeah, and she used to write code for that. So I was like, how's the work? So she said, it's, sometimes it's really boring. You have to just write a small piece of code. It's just counting the number of clock cycles. So I said, then why yeah. do they pay you so much? So she's like, uh, oh, because if the pacemaker stops, then there's a serious problem. So yeah, that's, that's something that uh, is interesting about software engineering. It's real world, much more real world than. And many people Absolutely. think.
yeah a lot of thought process is involved like while designing there's a lot of thought process is involved so yeah and yeah. there is no set answer actually for this while i'm doing dsa questions i know that there's this answer that i have to yeah. So we can add uh, I, I other would... features to this also i think absolutely absolutely there, there is no set answer uh, if you're looking for entrepreneurship or if you're looking for uh, ways in which you can you know uh, create real world projects designing systems is much more important uh, in my opinion than than data structures and algorithms data structures and algorithms will help you understand that hey if there's an index on the id then how is that index working it's a b tree yes okay uh, if you have get teams then how am i going to route this request you know in a load balanced way all those things are awesome yes but the fact is we are engineers so we are half mechanics half researchers not yes just researchers so, yeah Okay, okay, I think I've I've given a what lot of question. I have. I'm so sorry, yeah. No, 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 no problem. Yeah, no, it's fine. So when yeah. is this like before the development stage? We this is the first step. Like first we design a system and then we turn into development thing, the coding yeah. part basically. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Design. If you get something wrong in uh, requirement mm -hmm. gathering, when you mm -hmm. talk to the client or when you are thinking about what product should we make. that is extremely expensive to fix okay because it's the amount of effort you put into it after that is is very high after that design design is the second most expensive phase if you get something wrong there very expensive and if you get things right uh, by definition you have saved a lot of money uh, yes. then comes implementation then comes testing mm. and then finally comes uh, launch so you know uh, i agree marketing is a really expensive thing but if you market things wrong it's you can quickly shift but if you have designed the whole product wrong uh, then everything goes wrong because that is the first step yeah absolutely absolutely and you have also told your sales team marketing team that you know we are building this and they are preparing all their uh, the content pieces that way and suddenly you say that no 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 from mock interviews we are actually creating uh, I, i don't know like uh, a book Like what? No. So the whole thing goes uh, for a toss. Yeah. No. Yeah. Like I'm very much looking forward to learning system design from now on, literally, because like I'm my third year and there's no system design course in my college. So yeah, I'll watch your videos. Awesome, awesome. So thanks so much, Muskan, for having me here. Uh, thanks for making this possible. <laughs> I I think I spoke a lot, uh, which I I don't know whether it was. Uh, no, it was you know, really maybe. Fun. Okay, uh, thank you. But also, uh, by the way, guys, if you are hmm. doing this back home, uh, there is no not going to be anyone speaking all the time. So it's good in a way because you get to think about the solutions yourself instead of yes. them being suggested to you. But yeah, hmm. uh, it's one of the yeah good things. Good things. All And right. I think I've learned from the best. So my foundation is really strong now. <laughs> so yeah. Let's see. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, Muskan, thank you so much for this. Take care thank uh, and uh, thanks guys for watching. See you. Bye. Bye bye.